Sanctuary and welcome back to our online service. My name is Tara Hollingsworth and I'm so excited to welcome you guys here today. If this is your very first time visiting with us online, we just want to say thank you for being here. We are so excited to welcome you and we also have a really great opportunity for you after service today. If you want to go ahead and join our starting point class, you can learn so much more about who we are at Sanctuary. What you can also do is you can also click the link that will take you to our welcome form. On that welcome form, we just want to know a little bit more about you, and you can also scroll to the bottom of that form, and you'll see a few Northside organizations that we're in partnership with. We want to invite you to go ahead and click one of those, and Sanctuary will make a $5 donation on your behalf. And for the rest of you who have been around for a little bit longer, we also want to say welcome to you. And there's also an opportunity for you as well. If you haven't been or if you haven't been able to be a member here at Sanctuary just yet, we're offering our very first Membership Matters class via, via Zoom. That'll take place next Saturday, August 15th. So go ahead and sign up for that by August 12th. You can find the link on our website. Membership Matters is just a class for you guys to hear about the history of Sanctuary and see how you can be a part of Sanctuary moving forward. And to all our members, of course, we're so excited to that you guys are here and welcome to you all as well. If you guys haven't signed up for a life group, life groups are in session. So go ahead check out our website and see which life group you can be a part of. Now today we're in our series called This Is Us and we're journeying through the book of Acts. So I want to invite you guys, if you have your Bible next to you, go ahead and grab your Bibles because we're going to be reading the scripture foundation for today. Our scripture comes from Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 37 and we're also going to read through Acts chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now a man named Ananias, together with his, with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together. God, we just ask, Lord, that your will would be done today, that we would be able to hear your word clearly, that this word would convict us, that it would challenge us, that it would encourage us that we would better be able to serve you and serve your people. Lord, we are open to you. Thank you for this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord always. Again, it's, it's me, Lysi, and my sister, Angel, that we come to give God some worship because he's a mighty God. If he's been mighty anywhere in your life, I want you just to lift your hands, open your mouth, and give God glory in your house, in your living room, in your car, wherever you're watching this. Just give God glory, even if you're watching it for a second time. 
Just give God glory because he's mighty. Because he's had a plan for you and he's going to see it through to the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can put your hands together with us too. This first part, I want you to repeat after me. Here we go, right here. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Do your fist like this. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
worship the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're so mighty. You're so mighty. We serve a mighty God. He's so awesome. He's so awesome in all his ways. He's so awesome in all his ways. Hallelujah. We take this opportunity to worship a mighty God, to worship the awesome God. Who can be like, who is like the Lord? There is nobody like him. And there's nobody I would rather serve, rather commit my life to. And I just thank him for being so awesome. Thank him for being so faithful. Thank you for being so patient. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
At this time, Sanctuary, we're going to continue on in our worship service through giving. Here at Sanctuary, there are four ways that you guys can all be included in giving. And that first way is you can give on our website at sanctuarycove.org. You can also give through text. You can give by mail. And the last and final way is you can give through our church center app. Here at Sanctuary, we really do value giving. We see it as a way to express our gratitude for what God is doing in our lives and the life of our church, and also a way to partner with what God is doing in this community. So let's take a moment and pray for our offering together. Lord, we are so grateful to be able to worship you today. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. Lord, I just ask that we would continuously feel your spirit throughout the remainder of this service, God that we would be so aware of you. God, I pray that you would be pleased with our giving today, God, but be pleased with our hearts, Lord, more than anything else. God, I ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be pleasing in your sight. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. There's times in our lives where we realize we need God, but there's also times when in our lives where we realize we need each other. And we want to take this opportunity to sing this song to encourage the body of Christ that we need each other. I need you, you need me. It only works if we all do it together. So let's just do all this work that we're doing in the name of Jesus together. Hallelujah. It says, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. part says this says I pray for you you pray for me I love you I need you to survive I won't harm you with words from my mouth I love you I need you to survive I pray for you you pray for me I love you I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love, I need you to survive. I pray for you, you pray for me. I love you, I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from 
my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Sanctuary and welcome again to worship today. My name is Pastor Rose and I serve in the area of formation here at Sanctuary and I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship. Today we are continuing on in our current sermon series, This Is Us, as we continue to look at the book of Acts in the early church. And today we're specifically looking at Acts chapter 4 verse 32 through chapter 5 verse 11. And this story is a very interesting one. We first see the early church thriving in the second part of, the ch of chapter 4. We see that the church again is sharing all they have. They're meeting the needs of the community. They are unified as a people. And to illustrate this generosity, we see Barnabas is highlighted here. He is highlighted as he sells his property and gives all of the proceeds to the apostles for the benefit of the community. And then in chapter 5, we see quite the opposite. We see a couple, Ananias and Sapphira, who also sell property and bring it to the apostles for the use of the community. But instead of giving all that they received, they deliberately decided to together that they would only give a portion of what they received. And we see immediately Ananias dies on the spot. And later the same thing happens to Sapphira. And we see in the final verse the impact of their actions on the community. That it, it immediately caused great fear within the community. This story today raises a lot of questions for us. In particular, how are we to apply this today? And we'll get that to that in just a bit. But first, it's easy for us today to think of the moral story um, of this uh, passage is uh, to not lie to God or to not withhold anything from others. And yes, those are very practical and integral parts and applications of this passage. But even more so, this passage is about the power of an authentic community. The power of an authentic community and what they can do when they are unified and the dangers when they are not. So you see the big picture of Acts is about the Holy Spirit's work in developing the early church. More particularly, it's about this kind of community the Holy Spirit is seeking to build through the movement of the early church. So our passage today challenges us to reflect on community. 
what kind of community God calls us to build and who God is, infor is forming us to be as part of that community. And this is a very relevant word for us today, Sanctuary, because we are probably more than ever in recent memory in a time and place where the whole world is asking, what is community and what does it look like? What is community during a pandemic, a global pandemic, when we have to isolate from one another? What does it look like to still be a community in a time of social distancing? And what is community as we are a mobilized church right now, not gathering physically together for worship, but serving the tangible needs of our community? What is community in the United States when we tout a heritage as uh, based on the ideals that all are created equal, and yet the only communities that experience that sort of treatment are white and upper class? What is community in the face of civil unrest right now? What is community when we are demanding new forms of public safety in our city? What does God's vision for community look like in 2020? We are living in a time when we are redefining community, not just here in Minneapolis, though if you live in this city, this is a, the content of daily conversation for residents here, but it's also a question on the global scale right now. What is community and what does it look like? Well, Acts has something very significant to say to us today. It has answers to these questions for us. And the Holy Spirit's power in our passage has something very relevant to reveal to us today. So let's look at Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 36 first. What is community in these verses? What does it look like? Well, verse 32 says it all. All the believers were one in heart and mind. These believers shared a similar vision and mission together. They were aligned with God's call to them as a community to spread the good news and care for one another in tangible ways. They were all working toward caring for each other and encouraging each other in the Lord. But does their oneness assume uniformity? Absolutely not. Make no mistake about it, this group is diverse. It included the wealthy, the middle class, those with significant needs. It included Jews and Gentiles, two groups who could not be more different in their identity, worldview, and culture. And yet, the text says, all believers were one in heart and mind. This is remarkable. And it could be easy for us to say, well, that was in the Bible. Things are, are, aren't like that anymore. That, that was a biblical utopia, and that's no longer plausible for today. They shared all their possessions. No one had claim to anything. They continued to preach the gospel and more were added to their number. And the spirit was moving in powerful ways. That is not realistic today in our American society all the time. But is it? Well, our society is hyper-focused on the nuclear family and taking care of you and yours. And I've seen incredible ways, however, of the shared community in my life. In fact, in some of the hardest season of my life, when I've had the ability to say that I need help and I've received it. Even though our culture is so focused on, on the individual, I have seen ways that sanctuary has broken out of that mold and cared for each other. And the most prominent ways that I have experienced that in my own life has happened here at Sanctuary Covenant Church. Now, eight years ago, around this time, my husband Ryan and I were, uh, we had recently found out that we were expecting our first child. We were about to have our first baby. And we were so excited, but of course, a little nervous. And 
Because, I mean, you know, becoming a parent is such a big deal. We had so many questions like, would we know what to do? Would we be good parents? How would we be able to meet all the needs that our child had? After all, kids are expensive and we're just starting out in our careers. And we question, were we able to truly provide all that was needed to raise this child? Now, while not every single question that we had could be answered in that moment, over the months before our first daughter's birth, every need we had was provided for. And it was provided for by this church. And I still remember when Jen Lockermeyer, one of our longtime sanctuary members, came over to our house. And here she came um, with all these totes after totes of all these clothes of her daughter, of all of Maddie's old baby clothes. And there in my living room, we sat and we poured over them. She told me stories about Maddie and how, um, what each item, um, what they meant and um, how family members gave them to her. And she generously gave them all to me for our daughter, Esme. I remember being so touched and seeing a closet full of clothes that was provided for by a member of our church. And then the female elder board members at the time threw me a baby shower. And it was incredible to have women from our church pray for me and our family, to laugh together and to celebrate, and certainly to share wisdom with me. And I was so blessed when one of our former members, Marcia Humphrey, read scripture and she prayed over me. And she named all of the fears that I was holding and she proclaimed the power of God and the comfort of the Spirit over all of those anxieties. It was such a powerful moment for me to see the generosity of the community in a time of tangible need. And now our cradle care ministry has cared for so many sanctuary families by providing meals and prayer, support as families welcome new babies into their home and into our church. And I've seen mothers surround new moms in prayer and support in those first few months when those postpartum time is so hard. And I have seen uh, my husband make meal after meal for families because he loves to share his gift of cooking. And then I get the joy of dropping them off to the family and welcoming that new child. We, I have seen Sanctuary, all of us use our gifts in intentional and tangible ways to care for the needs of our community. Now this is one of many ways that we can be like the believers in Acts. We too can meet the needs of those in our church and within North Minneapolis. We have the people power. I know we have the passion power and we certainly have the Holy Spirit power. So can you imagine what our community would look like if we were generous like Barnabas, giving what he had for the benefit of everyone? That's what we're called to in this passage. But it could, again, be easy for us to idealize Barnabas' act. Sure, it was easy for him to do that then, but surely we can't now. But sanctuary, we can we see Barnabas gave fully, and it shows the result of that generosity among others, that all believers were one in heart and mind, and that all of their needs were provided for. But as we turn to chapter 5, we see something completely different play out here. In fact, not only are the actions different, but the whole tenor of the community itself changes. So in turning to chapter 5, we see in verse 1 that the story of this couple is meant to be a juxtaposition to Barnabas. Verse 1 says, Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. But they did something different. Uh, in verse 2 it says that with his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself but he brought the rest to um, be put at the apostles' feet. 
And then here we see that Peter exposes him, saying that he kept some for himself. And he lied to the community and he lied to God. And with that, Ananias dies instantly. And then a few hours later, uh, the same thing happens to Sapphira. Now there are three actions um, that this couple did that harmed the community and God. First, they withheld what God wanted them to give fully in the first place. Second, they conspired together to commit this sin. And third, they lied. And all of it was to look good on the outside while seeking self-interest above the community at large. And what is most telling about their actions is in the final verse, verse 11. How, this is where it shows how their actions act, actually impacted the community. And it says, Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Now our passage goes from all believers were one in heart and mind to great fear. Fear sees the whole church community. So what, is, what does this mean for us, Sanctuary? Well, it's important to recognize that the actions of Barnabas created a community of trust and unity, whereas the actions of Ananias and Sapphira broke down that trust and caused great fear and division within the community. So in our current uh, day application of this text, it is fair to conclude in reading this passage that our individual actions, our intentions, impact the community and they matter to God. They impact the community and what we do matters to God. So it causes me to wonder for all of us, and certainly myself, how often do I consider how my actions, how my sin will impact the community, will harm others and displease God? Or maybe we might say it another way. Do I truly believe that we are interconnected and what I do affects you? Do I believe that? When we fail to see how we are interrelated, how an action can impact each other, then we are at great risk of harming each other, often in unintended ways. So today, Sanctuary, as we continue to apply this passage, I want us to consider a few questions today. I want to give you space for self-reflection today in light of this passage. Because as I've been sitting in this passage this week, it's caused me to have significant self-reflection of myself. So I want to invite you into that space as well. So these will be on the screen to see, but you might want to either write them down or take a picture of a screenshot so you can go back to them. So you can take time this week to sit with the Spirit at a later time and reflect and to pray and to act. So these are five questions that I want each of us to consider and to consider these not in a shame-based framing of them, but with a perspective that we all deeply want to be formed by God. We want the Spirit to work among us. We want to grow as God's people together. And that growth requires acknowledging where we are harming ourselves and others where we are breaking down community, often again in unintentional ways. So as you ask these questions, wonder with the Spirit in a space of grace and not of shame sanctuary. We don't need any more shame associated with the church and instead need to continually acknowledge God's deep love for all of us. And as I like to remind myself, often when I am in a space of prayer and confession to God, I often remind myself and say this, there is nothing I can do to make God love me more or less. God's love is sufficient. God's grace is everlasting. So given that in our text today, my first question for us today of self-reflection is, how have I seen community formed 
through shared acts of generosity? How have you been on the receiving end of extravagant grace? And how did that create community and build trust and form deeper relationships? Maybe you've been able to express generosity to another person, and through that you've grown closer together. So take time to recall a time in your life that generosity has created a sense of community, a sense of deeper community with others. How have I seen community formed through shared acts of generosity? Then as we consider Ananias and Sapphira, consider your own sins. Take an account. Ways that you may have harmed others in the community. What sins am I glossing over as goodness that threaten the community? Now this question takes more reflection. And it might even take a conversation with another person that you trust. Are there ways that you are presenting yourself or your family or your marriage or your situation as better than what it actually is? Or are you avoiding issues that need tending to? What are we presenting as truth, but in reality is a falsehood? Now that's a difficult and deep question to ask ourselves in prayer with the Spirit. But it also can bring up some really hard things in our life. And I know that just in pre preparing for this sermon, the Spirit was convicting me over and over again of my own pride, my own need for uh, per, uh, perfection and control and how I'm often showing something that's not always the full truth. And asking this question of myself is hard. What sins am I glossing over as goodness that actually threaten the community? That as we begin to see and confess our sins in our life, then we must also ask ourselves in light of our passage today, who have I involved in my sin? Like Ananias, who intentionally plotted with, with Sapphira, who have we involved in our sin? How does that affect that person and that relationship that we have with them? How might we try to make things right again? Who have we involved? Then next, the self-reflection uh, self question we need to ask is, what am I withholding from God and others? And why? Why is that sin there in the first place? Because after we have identified the sin that God is revealing to us and those that we may have included in that sin, then we have to ask the deeper question of why. What ultimately are we holding back? Why? What areas um, does God need to heal in us? And what areas do we need to face with God's truth and with God's love? Then finally, sanctuary. What kind of community is God calling sanctuary to continue to build in this season? And how am I a part of that? As I shared at the start of this sermon, we are in a time where the world is asking, what is community? And, what, um, and how might it be redefined right now? We are positioned in such a way to answer that for the world through the truth of Jesus, the power of the Spirit, and God's call for the world. So what are we imagining, Sanctuary? How are we each a part of that vision for our community? Well, church, I hope that in the coming weeks that you will set aside some time to reflect to reflect fully on these questions. But it's also important to ask why these questions and why now? Well, as a church community, again, it's the perfect time to consider how each are engaged or not in the life of the church and to consider with the Spirit how God is asking us to press in right now. We need each other right now. And no doubt, we, there are great needs among us, just like the church in Acts. And we are positioned as a people to meet those needs as a community. 
It's also a ripe time, as I've already mentioned, to consider what broader community we want to form here in our city. We are being given a space and a voice to shape community in integral, just, sustainable, radical, and gospel-centered new ways. So how are we taking advantage of that opportunity for God's glory and not our own? So I want to encourage you, Sanctuary. I want to encourage you that many of you are pressing in. You are imagining with your neighbors what community might look like moving forward. So be encouraged and keep at it, Sanctuary. The Spirit will strengthen you, but it will come at a cost. We see that both from Barnabas and from Ananias and Sapphira. That Barnabas sacrificed so much and gave God all the glory. Whereas Ananias and Sapphira sacrificed little and sought their own glory. So today I ask of you, I ask of me and all of us, what community do we imagine and what are we willing to do to make it a reality? What are we willing to do to make it a reality so that we might be one in heart and mind, just like the church was in Acts? So Sanctuary, consider again our passage. We've looked at what it means to the people in the early church. We've considered what it means for us. Now what do we do with that? I encourage you to take these questions and sit with them this week. Reflect with a trusted friend and begin to press into community life here at Sanctuary in North Minneapolis. And remember that as we consider where God is asking us to confess our shortcomings and to press into deeper community, to not let the act of confession paralyze us in shame today or this week. The good news in Jesus is not about shaming us for our humanity, but acknowledging our humanity, inviting God to make all things new by the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. So Sanctuary, remember our role is not to be perfect witnesses of Jesus as we build the community, uh, kingdom community here on earth, but instead to be a credible witness to Jesus to be a daughter or son of God who won't always get it right, but continues to press in for, for the fulfillment of the kingdom, the good of the community and the glory of God. So Sanctuary, I just wanna encourage you today to continue to press in, continue to imagine together. We'll share soon ways that we believe the spirit is igniting an imagination to press into the transformation of the community here in North Minneapolis. So join us in that discernment, that imagining, and be mindful of how the Spirit is asking you to press into those ways. So let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for this time that we've had to consider this passage today and what it means for us as your people, Lord God. God, we ask that uh, in this time, in this season, as you're asking us to consider what community looks like, gospel-centered community, that, Lord, we would be receptive, that we would be listening and pressing in to hear the community vision that you have here on earth, Lord God. God, we ask that each of us individually would take an account Take time with the Spirit to take an account and to confess the ways that we have either withheld or involved other people in our sin or ways that we have um, neglected to fully press into community here at Sanctuary in the North Minneapolis. God, convict us, challenge us, form us as your people in deep in sustaining ways so that we may do your work here on earth as you desire it to be as it is in heaven. So God, we give you this day. And we give you ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship together, Sanctuary. I pray for you. You pray for me. 
church, unified as God's people and generous wherever we see need. And may we continually reflect and confess our sins that impact others and break down authentic community. Now God has been and is guiding us in exciting ways to build community here in North Minneapolis. And we invite you, Sanctuary, invite you to be a part of that kingdom work. And to remember, remember that we need each other in this work together. God bless you, Sanctuary. Have a wonderful week.